In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and install five add-ons that I think every new Home Assistant user needs to have or know about. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. So today we're going to be looking at five different add-ons. These add-ons are all add-ons that I think every new Home Assistant user should be using. But in fact, every Home Assistant user should be using. So the five add-ons we're going to be having a look at today are the file editor, hacks, SSH, Samba, and snapshots. I think all of these add-ons add such value to your Home Assistant, and I actually find it really strange now to use Home Assistant without one of these. Now, these add-ons are just my opinion, so it's all personal choice. Let me know in the comments below some add-ons that you think beginners should use or your preferred ones. Let's start by saying what is an add-on. An add-on is an additional bit of software that you can add to your Home Assistant instance to gain extra functionality. There are a few specific add-ons that require you to have advanced mode enabled in your Home Assistant instance. If you're not sure how to do that, if you want to jump to my Navigating Home Assistant Beginners Guide, there's a little step-by-step -step on how to do that in there. There are a few specific add-ons that require you to have the advanced mode enabled. That's just a setting in Home Assistant. If you're not sure how to do that, if you jump to my Home Assistant Basics video, episode one, there's a little part in there that tells you how to do that. I'll have links to this page in the description below if you wanna check this out. This is just the official Home Assistant documentation and it just tells you information about what add-ons are. There's also a link on the bottom of the page here and if you click on that, it will take you and show you all of the different repositories that are currently available and these are all repositories for different add-ons that are available so have a little read of that if you're interested okay enough talking let's have a go at getting these add-ons installed then so the first add-on we're going to have a look at is the file editor so the first place we need to go to get an add-on is the supervisor so on your sidebar on the left here you should see the option for supervisor if you just click on that you can see here we currently have no add-ons and there's a little message to tell us that we have no add-ons and in that box where it says that there's no add-ons, there is a little link to the add-on store. Clicking that will take you there. And also this bit at the top here, that add-on there, that will also do the same thing. So let's have a look at the add-on store. So from here, we can see two sections. We've got the official Home Assistant add-ons made by the Home Assistant developers. We've also got the community add-ons made obviously by the community. Now there's a whole bunch here. And you can just click on any of them and you'll get descriptions and documentation for each one. So you can scroll around and have a look at them or there is a search bar on the top here. So we know what our one is called. So let's type in file editor and we can see that here. Once we click that, we can see the file editor. So we can see some information about the file editor here, what it is, what it does. And at the top, there is a split view tab for documentation. So we can click that and it will give you all the instructions you need to get the file editor installed. It'll also tell you any configuration settings you need to set up and change. So whenever you're going to add an add-on, always have a look at the documentation, have a read of what it does and have a look at the documentation if you want a sort of pointer at how easy it is to get up and running. So the file editor is a web app that allows us to navigate around the Home Assistant file system and when you navigate around the file system, you can view all of the bits of Home Assistant and you can go in and edit them. Um, when you open up a file, it does have like a nice syntax markup, um, which is part of the file editor. So you get the whole syntax highlighting, which is quite nice. It's nice that you can do this from within the web browser without having to navigate elsewhere. Now, there are a few other add-ons that allow you to do similar things like this. There are also add-ons that give you a bit more power, such as VS Code, but that add-on requires a bit more power. And when you're out and about, if there's a quick fix that you want to do, it's nice to be able to just jump on the file editor and quickly get in and change your configuration or update a password or something. Um, it's very lightweight and it's very simple to use. So let's get this installed. So this is the same for all add-ons. When you don't have it installed, there'll be your description about the add-on and there'll be a little install button here. So we're going to just click install on that. Depending on the add-on you're installing will determine your installation time. The file editor isn't too big, so it shouldn't be that long. But we're just going to wait for the little blue wheel to stop spinning. And oh, there we go. 
and once that has stopped spinning we get a few options so the first one is start on boot so whenever your home assistant restarts or comes to life um, this add-on will automatically start and these are all just toggles so you can have them on or off so the watchdog is also a useful one so if the add-on crashes and not home assistant itself then the add-on can actually automatically restart itself well home assistant kicks the add-on and it restarts but you get the idea auto update so whenever an update comes out for the add-on if you want it to just automatically update again these are all personal preference for me i personally don't do the auto update i leave that off and then i always like to read the patch notes to see what the update includes and then i also just check to see what people in the community are saying about it because sometimes you can have an update that breaks a whole bunch of things so again up to you and showing the sidebar this one's nice so if we just click that we can now see on the left here we've got the file editor here and the last two options we have then is start and uninstall so because we haven't run this add-on yet it will tell us to start if we restarted home assistant and we have the start and boot this would automatically start so we're just going to click start here and now we have an option to restart and open the web ui Open the web UI will open the file editor the same as clicking on the file editor here would do. So I should just also point out at the top. So we have information and documentation. When you install an add on, you also get these extra two. So there's the configuration. So you can actually go in here and edit these bits of code here. Um, and this relates to the actual add on itself. There's also a log so you can view a running log for what's happening within your add on. So if there's any errors or issues with a particular add on, this would be the first place you go to check those out. So let's have a quick look at the file editor then. So if we just click the file editor on the left here now. We then get this nice little view and from here we can click the file and we can view all of the different parts of our home assistant here. We can navigate around the file structure. We can click into any of these files. We can create new files. We can edit files. Um, if we go into the configuration YAML here, I've already got this one open, um, but we could come in here and we could just add lines in or edit them. You can see here that syntax highlight highlighting that I was on about. So you've got the different colors there just to make it a bit more readable. If you're doing any file editor changes, there's one thing that I would recommend you do after any of the changes you do. Once you've hit save there, you should go into the configuration, scroll down to server controls, and then there's a big blue button here in configuration validation. If you just click that, it will just check that your configuration is valid. If it's invalid, it could cause you problems on restart, such as home assistant doesn't boot at all. Um, so yeah, check that it's valid and make sure your code's right. And that's basically it for the file editor. That was just a quick look at it of what it does and how to install it. So next up, we're going to have a look at SSH. So again, we're going to go back to the supervisor tab. Now we can see we've got one add-on installed here. We're going to click on add-on store at the top now. And we're going to just do another search and we're going to search for SSH. So there's two SSH add-ons. The one that we're going to use is the Home Assistant Community one. So we're just going to click that and we're going to go ahead and click install. Now this one does take a couple of minutes to install. So while that's installing, I'll just run through what it is and what it does. So this add-on allows you to access Home Assistant using SSH. You can navigate around your files. You can edit Home Assistant. You can use the command line tools all through a web app. As I mentioned, there is documentation and information about each add-on on the add-on page. So if you want more information about what this add-on does, um, you can go there and read that. So our main use for this add-on will be to SSH into Home Assistant. So how I mentioned before, you could break something in the configuration. If you have this SSH running, you could get into the files through SSH and you could actually change or revert a file like that. Another really good thing that this allows us to do is to easily add on repositories and other bits of information. Um, we'll actually be showing this off with another add-on that we're going to be installing in a moment and we'll be using the web app to do that. That's installed and now ready to go. So the first thing we want to do now with this SSH add-on is come up to the top and we're going to click configuration. From here we can see the basic configuration and we're going to want to edit our username and password here. This will be the username and password that we use to SSH into Home Assistant. 
Once you've entered your username and password there, you want to hit save. With the password here, you can also store that in secret so it's not just available in the configuration. Okay, we're then going to want to go back to info and we're going to just hit start. We're also going to add this to our sidebar. I noticed that mine instantly stopped running there. Um, and I think I know why this is, but again, we've got a nice live example here. So our SSH client web app has just crashed. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the log up here. So in the log here, we can see some scary red text and we can see that the password that I tried to use isn't very secure. So who knew that password wasn't a secure password? So if that happens to you, um, have a look in that log and check what your scary red text is. <laughs> so I'm just gonna head back up to the configuration here and I'm gonna set a more secure password. All right, let's give that another go. Okay, so it didn't instantly stop. So it's obviously now happy with our password. So the next thing we're gonna do then is just hit open web UI. And from here, we can now see our lovely SSH web app client thing. I think it's just a web app. <laughs> just to make it clear, when you're running this add-on, it starts your SSH server. So if it's not running, you can't connect obviously on SSH. So I'll just show you that now. So currently the add-on stopped. So I'm just gonna head over to Mobrex term just to show you this. Um, you can use any SSH client you like. Um, this is just my preferred one. So I'm gonna start a new SSH session. Um, I'm gonna target the um, my Home Assistant instance. So I've entered the IP address and I've got the port number there. I'm just gonna click OK. And it's gonna try and connect to it. And you can see that the connection was refused and that's because obviously our add-on isn't running. So if we just jump back over to that and we're gonna restart our add-on now. And now we jump back to Mobrex term. If I just restart that connection, it should connect. And there we go, it's seen it. So it's now asking us who we're gonna log in as. So I'm gonna enter the name that I did before, uh, the account username thing, <laughs> username. Enter the username, it's gonna ask us for the password. I'm gonna supply that and just ask me if I wanna save the password. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna close that for now. And there we go, that's us connected to Home Assistant through an SSH client. And once you're in that then, you can go ahead and do all of your fun Linux stuff and go wild. In all seriousness though, if you're not familiar with using um, SSH clients and dabbling around with command line tools, and maybe just be that extra bit more careful, um, you can actually do quite a bit of damage to Home Assistant if you accidentally do things. So just remember, with great power comes great responsibility and you should be okay. Just read the documentation. <laughs> If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the notification bell. Drop me a like as well if you are enjoying it and getting some value from this content. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the good stuff. So now let's move on to our third add-on and the third one is gonna be Hacks. So if you haven't heard of Hacks, Hacks stands for Home Assistant Community Store and it's a place where you can go to download front-end things. So things such as new cards, styles, themes, um, you can also download third-party integrations. So everything on the Hacks store is all made by members of the community just working together or, or individually, um, and they just bring us this content. And I'm just going to point out here that this content is all made by third parties. None of it is vetted by the Home Assistant team. So you would you choose to install and add these things on at your own risk. There has been a security disclosure recently. I'll have a link in the description for a video that I did on that. Um, and a security fault that was found was because of some of these third party integrations. But don't be scared and don't let that put you off using hacks because there's so many great things on there and there's so many great developers. And if you stay up to date and stay vigil with your security, then you should be perfectly fine. So this is gonna be a relatively quick installation of Hacks. I'll leave a link to the Hacks installation guide um, in the description below if you wanna check that out. Um, I'm not gonna be adding any integrations or doing any front end things, um, but I will be doing a longer 
and standalone hacks video where I go through these things in more detail. So if you're after more information on hacks, stay tuned for that one. You are also going to need a GitHub account. So if you haven't got one already, go ahead and get one. They're free to set up and create. You don't need any Git knowledge or any Git expertise. You just need the account to do some authorization. Alrighty then, we're going to just open up the terminal here and we're just going to paste in this command from the hacks installation guide. And just hit enter on that. And what that's going to do is just download the necessary files for hacks. Um, and you'll know that that's done installing because you'll see the little blue tilde again. And once that's happened, we're going to go back into configuration, go back to server controls. We're just going to check our configuration again. If that's happy and valid, we're just going to hit restart. Once Home Assistant's back up and running, we're going to go back into configuration and into integrations. If we go to add an integration now in the bottom right and we start typing out hacks, we should see that hacks is now there. So we're going to click hacks and then it's going to start doing its installation. So the first bit we did was downloading the necessary files to get hacks in Home Assistant. And this part now is actually going to install it physically into Home Assistant. So just be patient, let that go through. And there we go, hacks is ready to go. So before we can carry on with hacks, we have to agree to all of these things. So you just have to say you know what they all are, even if you don't. But you do, because you're smart. So it's going to pop up this device authorization box. And what we're going to need to do is click on this link and then enter the code below here. So clicking that link will take us to this device activation page. If you're not logged in, you'll have to just first log in and then it will redirect you. Um, so we just need to enter that code here now. And once we've entered that code, it's going to ask us to just authorize hacks. So we need to just press yes and authorize hacks. And boom, there we go. We can now hop back over to Home Assistant and we'll see this success message to say that it's authorized and all good to go. Here you can assign an area you want hacks to be in if you want to. I'm just going to hit finish and I'm just going to give Home Assistant another restart. So back to configuration, server controls. I'm just going to check the configuration again there and restart. Okay, once that's restarted, we should see hacks here in the sidebar now. If your hacks has got like a, a white icon or it's just missing, if you hold control and hit F5, that will do a full refresh um, and that icon should just reappear. We just go back into configuration now and into integrations. We can now see hacks here. There's a little options button here on hacks. So if you want to click that, you can toggle on any of these if you wish. So if we click on hacks now in the sidebar, this will be where we go to sort of shop around for new integrations and new front end themes and things. So if we wanted an integration, we could come in here, click on integrations. We could then add, click add down here. So have a browse around there. If you find something that you like, you can just click it and there'll be instructions on how to install it and set that up. And that was a brief look at hacks. So we've got hacks installed. So you're now ready to add on any custom integrations you want. Now, I know hacks doesn't appear in this add-ons list, but it is an add-on. Okay, onto our fourth add-on now. So we're now going to add on Samba. So to get Samba, we're going to go to the add-on store at the top. And we're going to just do a search for Samba. And the one we want here is Samba Share. So just select that. And we're going to go ahead and install. So what this add-on is going to allow us to do is share files across the network to a Windows machine or Mac. Just any machine that's on our network. So we can use another machine to remotely edit the configuration files or add files to our home assistant. Okay, once that's installed, we need to just make a couple of changes to the configuration and then we can hit start. So we need to come into configuration and we need to add our username and password here again. And again, this username can be whatever you want as long as you remember it. And again, you can use the secrets file here if you wish. In this configuration, you can also allow and disallow uh, specific IP ranges. You can also choose whether to allow or disallow specific file extensions. Once you're happy with your configuration, we're going to come back to the info page and we're just going to click start on our Samba share. I'm now just going to show you how you can map a network drive in order to quickly access your home assistant share. Um, I'm on a Windows machine, so I'll be showing it you for Windows, but you can do it if you're on a Mac. If you head up to the documentation here, there's a how to use and how to set up the connection in there. So we need to open up a file explorer window 
In the top bar then, we're going to type backslash backslash then the IP address of your Home Assistant and hit enter. It will then pop up a box asking you for your username and password. I haven't got that because I literally just connected to it a second ago so it knows who I am. So enter your username and password and then you should be able to see all the different shares that are on your Home Assistant. So one that you'd be definitely interested in is the config. So you could go into your config then and then you can see your configuration.yaml here, the one that we looked at earlier. So if you wanted to, you could just right click that and you could edit that. So you now have a way of editing files on Home Assistant using your Windows machine. You can do this with a Mac as well. If you want to, you can also map the network drive. So we just connected to it. But I'll just quickly show you how to map a network drive. And what mapping this drive will allow you to do is when the machine starts, it will just automatically connect to your Home Assistant so you don't have to enter the username and password every time. So we're going to open up File Explorer again. We're going to hit Computer. And we're going to click Map a Network Drive. You can then choose the drive letter for where you want to assign Home Assistant. Let's go for H because it's free on my machine. We're then going to just enter that IP address again. And we're going to say Browse. We can then pick the specific share that we want to map. So the config one that I pointed out is a super handy one. So I'm just going to map that one. So I'm going to click on config here and click OK. And I want to tick this reconnect at sign in. And I want to say connect with different credentials and finish. Now, the reason I click connect with different credentials, if you don't tick that, it will just try and use your Windows credentials. So if you've set up a specific username and password combination in your config for the Samba share, you'll need to enter that. So username and password, this will be your Samba username and password. And you want to just hit remember my credentials and OK. And remember my credentials and OK. And there we go. So it will ask you to remember the credentials twice. So you didn't do it wrong. And there we go. That's mapped. So now on this PC, I'm just going to rename this just to something more memorable. So, so from here, I can see I've now got my Home Assistant demo. And when I click into this, it will take me straight into the configuration so I can add files here or edit them simply. And again, it will do this when I log on. So if you turn the machine off and reboot it, uh, as soon as it starts back up, it will try and map this. Whew. And that was a quick look at Samba Share. If you need any help or have any issues with Samba Share or mapping your network drives, anything like that, then drop me a comment below and I'll try and help you or I'm sure one of our other cool community members will be able to help you out. The last add-on we're going to look at now is probably one of my favourite ones. Not only does it save you time, it can also save your whole Home Assistant. So this add-on is the Home Assistant Google Drive Backup and it's created by a guy called Stephen Beecham. So massive thank you to Stephen for putting the work in and creating this. But essentially what this snapshot does is it automates the whole snapshot process. So currently it's a manual process to go in and create a snapshot and there's not a nice, convenient, easy way to automate this. There is a few, but this one is by far the cleanest and nicest one that I've found. And again, it's personal uh, opinion and choice. So for this particular add on, you are going to need Google Drive. So you're going to need a Google account um, and with that Google account, you'll automatically get access to the free Google Drive, which I think is 15 gig. So plenty of space for Home Assistant backups. And the really cool thing about this um, add on is it lets you set up a schedule and then at the set times in the schedule, Home Assistant will create that backup at that time and it will make a copy of that backup on Google Drive. So you've got the copy on your local Home Assistant and then you've also got it in the cloud. So it's just extra secure. Secure in the sense that you have more than one backup location, not secure because it's in the cloud. That is a trade off. You are getting a backup, but you're having to put your backup in the cloud. So, you know, that could be your whole Home Assistant instance in the cloud. So you need to make sure your Google account is safe and probably two factor authenticated. So I'll leave a link in the description below for Stephen's GitHub page if you want to go and check that out. He's got a full list of instructions on how to set all of this up. So if you're stuck or not sure, then you can also check out Stephen's guide. Um, this is going to be a brief and quick run through of it. 
but again i've got a snapshot video coming up where i actually run through this process in a lot more detail and i also look at the other types of ways you can automate and use snapshots getting all those plugs in today right so first things first we're going to go to the add-on store again and we're going to come up here to the top right and click the three dots we're then going to click repositories and we're going to paste in this line here this line will be in the description below go grab that and we're going to just hit add and then close and what that will do is it will add another repository section to your add-ons so at the beginning i mentioned we had the official ones here we've also got the home assistant community add-ons here and now at the bottom here we've got stevens one so just like any other add-on we can come in here and click on it we can then just hit install and let it do its thing okay once that's installed there's a couple of toggles i recommend you turn on so obviously you want start on boot i'd also turn on the watchdog so if the add-on crashes it will try and pick itself up again if it crashes just before it's supposed to make a backup and then your home assistant totally dies you could potentially lose a lot of stuff so that one's good to have um again optional here but adding it to the sidebar i like having it in the sidebar it's up to you if you do the same and then finally we're just going to hit start and we're going to go open web ui okay once that opens up we're going to be presented with this page and this is because we've not yet authenticated the google drive backup so we're going to just hit authenticate with google it's then going to ask us which account we're going to use so choose your account and then we need to press allow on the backup permission we then also need to press allow on this next box once you've pressed allow on all of those, it's going to give you a big long authorization string. You're going to want to copy that and then paste it back in the getting started box and just click save. Once you've done that, it's going to open up the add on and it's going to start backing up. Okay, from here, then we can go into settings and we can see how many snapshots are going to be stored in Home Assistant. So these are the ones that are going to be stored locally on our Home Assistant drive. Um, so you can toggle this number up or down to fit your need. There's also the number that are going to be stored in Google Drive. Um, once it's made four, it will make another one. It will just automatically remove the oldest one. That's how that works. So you can also pick the number of days between the snapshots and you can also pick, you know, the time you want it to do it. So for me personally, I like to have it back up every one day and I always like mine to back up at three o'clock in the morning. So you need to enter the hour and then the minutes. The last setting we're going to look at here is just the password. As I mentioned, I do have a longer video coming out of this. So I'll be going through all of these different settings and options in a future video. So if you're interested in that, then keep an eye out for that one. So the password is an optional thing. I would definitely recommend it being as though you're pushing your whole Home Assistant instance up to the cloud. So if somehow somebody got into your Google Drive, they would also need this extra password in order to decrypt your Home Assistant backup. And again, this password can also be used in your secrets file. So if you've got secrets set up, then you can reference it like that. If not, then you can just enter the password here. Okay, and with our password and our schedule set, we're just about done. So we're going to just hit save. And there we go. With my 3am cycle, I can now see that the next snapshot is going to be in two hours. I can also see when the last snapshot was and also how big those files are. And there we go, guys. That's the five add-ons I would recommend to Home Assistant beginners. These five add-ons all expose Home Assistant in a particular way. So whether it's allowing you to access files and edit parts of Home Assistant um, using different input methods or having your Home Assistant automatically backed up, I think they're all super useful and super handy and I use all of them in my own personal setup. If you've got any questions or issues regarding the setup or, or installation of any of the add-ons, then let me know in the comments below. I've got lots of regular people now that are helping out in the comments. So thank you to you guys. You know who you are. You're awesome. Also check out my other social medias. Feel free to leave messages there or ask any questions on those. I've just finished my first month of YouTube. I'm really enjoying it. I've got plenty of ideas and more content to come. I'm constantly trying to improve and, you know, just be more helpful to you guys. If you have found the video helpful or entertaining, then drop me a like and let me know in the comments below. 
If you're interested in seeing more, then press that subscribe button. And if you press the little bell notification, you'll be alerted whenever I get a new video out. I am working on trying to put together a schedule. So again, check me out on the other social medias and you'll find out what's happening with that. And I'll hopefully catch you in the next one. Cheers. If you've got any questions or issues, what? Once Home Assistant's restarted, we're going to go into Supervisor. No, we're not. We're not going to do that. The five add-ons that we're going to be having a look at today are the File Editor, SSH, Samba. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs>